Again, this is Jazz 313. This is a reaction to the John Morant. And this right here is talking about what makes the John Morants do what John Morants do. John Morants do what John Morants do is because we as adults, we as administrators, we as AU coaches, basketball coaches, even in some cases high school teachers, in some cases principals. I've seen a principal ask a teacher to change a grade so a kid can stay eligible. So what we're doing with that kid, the John Morant, so I don't want to pick on him, I'm praying for John Morant. Right now we're going to just talk about what makes that action brandishing a gun. What makes certain players go this way and some go that way. Uh, right now you think about Paris Hickman used to play basketball here at Michigan State, Keith Appling. But then you look at the other side of that, you look at Ishmael, who just brought the Phoenix Suns, he played basketball. So we make decisions, but here's what produces. It's like, what produces the John Morants? What produces the Bob Proberts, who like to fight? What produces the Denny McClain? What produces the Art Cecil, who used to be a quarterback at Ohio State? What makes Lawrence Taylor, or, or why can Dexter Manley go four years through college and can't read? What makes all these things? We make them. I can remember as a basketball player in high school, we had an all-stater, great guy. We used to do his work. We knew he wasn't doing anything, but he went to college, he flunked out. We enabled him, we use him. And some of these coaches, as I'm giving you from a perspective of a high school, former high school principal, I've had a football player that I caught drinking liquor. And guess what, he stole the teacher's car. I suspended him. They went over my head with a school board member to let this guy play. Now the guy is in prison right now. I go, you know, before COVID, I would go speaking in jails. I would see some of these guys. I could recognize some of them because they, you know, have facial hair, some of them have matured. But not being judgmental, we just love John Moran. I know you can turn your life around. I think about Michael Irvin. I think about Michael Vick. I think about even Mike Tyson. These guys are productive citizens now, paying taxes. Child, we need you. In my opinion, John Morant is arguably one of the most exciting basketball players that I've seen. I've seen Oscar Robinson, I've seen Dr. J, played with Michael Jordan, uh, Magic Johnson. John Morant is right there with them as far as dynamic. He's a, a, a must see, it's like going up Broadway, but John, you gotta pick your friends. And I know parents, yeah, he got his father running, but sometimes, uh, sometimes people don't tell you the truth. It's almost like the and the emperor, you know, some emperor walked around naked to a kid, told him, some people don't tell you the truth. I've seen teachers, good teachers, uh, seeing guys play, shouldn't have played, went over my head, somebody changed the grade. Uh, and, and what happens when the Parrish Hickmans, uh, the Keith Applings, or the Marvin Bad News Barnes, these guys get in trouble. The O.J. Simpsons, because they've been used to being pampered. Athletes are pampered. I was an athlete. I didn't know you had to buy books until I was a junior in college. That's how pampered I was. I was naive. People used me. Go get me a book. Go get me a t-shirt. Go get me a sweat. I would go get it. That's how dumb I was. I didn't know because I didn't have to pay. Because I was pampered. You on airplanes. You got a tutor. You got somebody massaging you. You got so much going on. I remember scanning out at the University of North Carolina. They was giving people grades for fake newspapers. I mean, fake, fake classes. Uh, listen, coaches, AU coaches, high school coaches, who participate as some athletic directors who participate in these kind of things, God will judge you. I can't judge you. Why is John Morant off the chain? He appeared, he got a father, he got a mother, he got a daughter, I want him to win. But I'm just trying to show you from an administrator, former athlete's point of view. I didn't go to the NBA, I did play college, did play high school, did play over in Milan, Italy. So I know a little bit about basketball. Basketball hasn't changed. Even in my era, I remember being in North Dakota, we had a guy, I don't want to say no names, this guy broke into a classroom, I mean, and broke into a, another student's room and stole the TV. The coach got him out. Later on, he raped a girl. They made that go away. Last I heard of him, he's in Fort Wayne, Indiana, doing a lifetime prison sentence for selling dope. 
one of the best basketball players I've ever played against. Don't say no names. But we have to turn this thing around. When you look at what is a state job, it's not just the money. Your daughter needs you. And, and administrators, school board members, board of directors, board of regents, it starts at the top. The reason why John is able to do that, I fought the Memphis Grizzlies. If we hear about it once, business, it didn't happen 10 times. Indiana, he got caught. They let it go. He go talk to the commissioner. Uh, you talk about another great man. He's uh, going to help render this decision as Joe Dumars. Played at the Pistons. Uh, you, you know, just a great guy. Wife, great guy. Uh, his son, my daughter, good friends. Just, just a good guy. It's a lot of great guys. But but Dumars always talk about his father. You know, what kept me on the straight and narrow was my grandfather and my mother. My mother couldn't really do that with me physically, but my high school coach. I kind of liked the guy. I didn't like him in high school because uh, he was hard on me. But guess what? He kept me on the straight path because I wanted to be like, think about Marvin Barnes. Marvin Bad New Bar Barnes. That's what they call him. Uh, just, just caught up into, uh, into foolishness. Uh, caught up into just craziness. I need you to understand the mindset of John Morant. It's not his fault. I don't want to act like a victimization. I tell my kids. I remember I got a daughter. I asked her. She was at East Michigan University. I said, let me see your grades. She just act like, you can't, you can't see my grades. So I'm thinking as a parent, she was 19 or 20. I go, can I see her records? The lady tell me at the register office, oh, she took you off of her uh, contact list. She's grown. It's a HIPAA law. I'm like, oh, okay. So I quit paying uh, her bills. So now she got to pay her own tuition. But my point is, when you're over 18, you are responsible. See, your mother can coddle you when you're up under 18. Your coach can coddle you. But when you get in this real world, go through LAX airport with a gun and see what happened. Go through JFK or LaGuardia Airport or Detroit Metro Airport with a gun and see what happened. Uh, walk out of, uh, I can remember my man, uh, he's a quarterback. I think he's, uh, he played at Florida State, James Winston. Go and steal some steaks. He didn't have to steal steaks. But he had, I know he learned his lesson. He turned himself around. Ja, you need to turn yourself around. We are winning. We all want you to win. We want you to win. I'm begging that somebody in the, in the circle, and I know God, you got to get to this man. You have too much to offer. You got a 200 million. You'll probably make a billion dollars playing basketball. A billion. The average person in their lifetime will make one million, two million dollars a year, if that. The average. I'm not talking about doctors and, and plumbers and those kind of people. Job and parents and people. I reacted to this because some people have asked me to. John, if you see this, go in the description box and you can find me at 42 Educational. People do it from all over the world. Not just John, whether you play soccer, lacrosse, swim, track. Coaches quit babying these kids for a win and a loss. Because as I told you before, I can't chastise you. Only God can. We want to give out positive vibrations. We want to make these young men and women productive citizens. That's our charge. I spent 27 years in the school system fighting for kids, advocating for kids. And my perfect note, oh, talk to some of my friends at, at, at 16 and 17, I was a lost child. But I turned it around because I had people who cared about me, people who looked at me more than an athlete. And some of these coaches don't care. I remember I was in college, I tried to take all the easy classes. The coach said, no, I looked at your mother in the face and I looked at your test score, you're smarter than that. So he put me in all the science and all the math and all the real core curriculum classes. Some of my friends, uh, they took all those classes and they bums. And, and, and we all started off together. And I'm not smart than anybody, I just happened to have a coach who cared and a mother who checked it. Some of you mothers and fathers, who put all of your eggs in that basketball and football, you need to quit living through your kids. I'm gonna say that again. You need to quit living through your kids and quit being trifling, looking for a free house. Because if you look at the statistics, 
is one and one something something million million. I look at it for every hundred hours I spend playing basketball, I only spent five hours staying. I wish somebody would have pulled me aside and say, at least 50 50. Yeah, I got a master's. I got a master's. I graduated so kind of light. I ain't never had no maybe, maybe one or two B's in my whole life. But I had to learn that later. Parents, it's up to you. When your kid mess up, let him or her deal with the consequences and you won't have a job around. I'm speaking from my heart. Forgive me for being so emotional, but I just love jobs, game. I like his spirit. I like his flamboyantness. But parents and coaches, administrators, board of regents, school board members, whoever you are, if an athlete mess up, let him or her deal with the consequences. It will serve them better in life. Again, until we meet again, Jazz313, subscribe and share. Forgive me for my heart is beating. That's how passionate I'm about it. And I'm normally do jazz. I'm just talking. I don't even like talking about basketball. That's so easy. But I had to. Ja, we need you. We want you to win. Again, the good coaches who stand up for righteousness, we don't talk about you enough, but I love those honest coaches, like my coach, Kenneth Jackson. He had his faults, but he was an honest, honorable man. He's still living, and I love you for making me the man that I am. I love my grandfather for not putting up. I love my mother for not believing my crap and believing the coaches and letting the coaches make me who I am. And parents, it's up to you. Everybody got to work together to uplift our kids. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you like this, please click subscribe and share. Thank you.